So I want to talk about an approach to practicing scales, arpeggios, that everyone does. But the problem is, if this is all you do, you can end up with a technique that's inherently fragile when it comes to making real music. So I want to talk about why it's inherently fragile and what you can do to adapt it in order to give yourself a technique that's that much more resilient when it comes to making real music. So let's start with what it is and why it has this fragility built in. So the first thing is if you take any sequence of notes, any group of notes, and you play them from one end to the other and back again, so you make a loop out of them, you end up with a phrase that contains an even number of notes. So let me, let me demonstrate. If I just take three notes, those three notes, and I'll loop them, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. It's a four note phrase, which is an even number. Let's add another note then. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six notes. Add another note. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So hopefully you can see, it doesn't matter whether I'm playing a scale or an arpeggio, it doesn't matter how many notes I put into that phrase, if all I do is make a loop out of them and I play from one end to the other and back again, I end up with a phrase that inherently contains an even number of notes. Now why do I care? Well, let's look at how you pick it. If you, if you use a pick and you use strict alternate picking, you've got a picking pattern that contains an even number of notes as well. It's just a downstroke and an upstroke. So when you pick a phrase that contains an even number of notes with a picking pattern that contains an even number of notes, you'll find that every time you go around that loop, you use the same picking pattern. And it doesn't matter how many times you go around that loop, you'll always start with a downstroke if the first time you play it round, you start the downstroke as well. And now, when it comes to making real music, of course, when you play scales, you go end to end, but when you're playing real music, you're playing fragments, you're playing parts of the scales, you never play end to end the way you practice, because you're not playing scales, you're making real music. And when you adapt a phrase like this, the chances are you won't start on the lowest note in the position, maybe you'll start on the second degree. But if you start on the second degree, suddenly your picking's upside down. Your picking's different to the way you've been practicing. Or if you start on a different string, let's say you've been practicing starting the E string, so it's down, up, down, and on the A string you go up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. When it comes to making real music, you decide to start on the A string with the downstroke, and again, your picking is upside down. And so, hopefully you can see, if you're not aware of how you're going to pick the phrase when you're making music, you've got one chance in two of trying to play a phrase using a picking pattern that you've never practiced. And that's why it's fragile. And it's actually even worse for me, being a fingerstyle guitarist, when I'm, when I'm doing my fast picking, I use a four finger pattern. Which means that if I'm using a, a, a four note group, my phrase will always start with my thumb. If the phrase is a multiple of four. If it's not a multiple of four, it's still an even number. So I'll find the phrase starts with my thumb second time round it's my second finger that starts a phrase then thumb second finger thumb but it's never my index finger or my third finger so if you like if i always practice starting a phrase with my thumb then i've got a three and four chance when i'm making real music of starting with the wrong finger that i've practiced with and that's the problem that's why it's fragile so what can we do about it well now you know about it, one of the things you can do is to consciously make the effort to start practicing scales using a different picking pattern. So if you always start with the downstroke, practice using an upstroke instead. And that's, what, that's one way of building a little bit more resilience in. But the problem with that is that you're human if you've... <sighs> 
we're human beings, we inherently follow habits, and even though I'm consciously aware of this, 95% of the time when I pick up the guitar and I play a phrase, I play the phrase in the same way as I always play it. So even though I'm consciously aware of the problem, I don't necessarily do something about it. Another approach which I quite like though is to change the phrase. So as I say, if I just play a phrase up and down, I end up with an even number of notes. But if I adapt the phrase slightly, if I drop one of those notes in that phrase, I end up with an odd number of notes. And now I'm picking, I'm using a picking pattern which has an even number of notes, playing a phrase with an odd number of notes, and that forces every time I play around that cycle to use a different picking approach. And this is my, actually my preference. I prefer to play phrases with odd numbers of notes when I'm practicing, especially when I'm doing scales, because like I say, you never play scales end to end when you're making real music. So it doesn't really matter if you adapt the phrase, if you add an extra note or you drop an extra note, because you know, you're never gonna play that phrase, you're never gonna be playing that scale end to end anyway. And my own preference, is to drop the note, the the note just before I I change from an ascending line to a descending line. So instead of going, I would go. And just making that one tiny change means that every time I play around that cycle I'm using a different phasing of left hand and right hand. And you can do the same thing with pentatonic lines. So instead of playing, I can go, or something like that. Or arpeggios. Instead of doing this, I drop one of the notes. And inherently by doing that, that gives every phase of left and right hand an even, an even workout. And hopefully you can see how that will make your picking that much more resilient when it comes to making real music. So give it a go, it's gonna feel awkward to start with, but that's kind of the point. It's much better to feel awkward while you're practicing so when you're playing live you don't feel awkward rather than practicing the same phrase in the same way over and over again and then finding that your technique fails when you start to use it live. So hopefully that was useful for you. Give it a try like I say and we'll chat next time. Goodbye.